guys, it's Trisha, the left-handed stitcher. Today I am going to show you how I corral a lot of fabric into a grime guard on a Q-snap. This is for Brian and for anybody else who's going to find this helpful. Because it is a, truly amazing at how much fabric you can corral into a grime guard. So you can see here, this is my Flower of the Month series. I'm not taking this one out right now because I'm still working on this block. But this is a Flower of the Month. So there are 12 of these blocks on this piece of fabric. So this is a very large chunk of fabric that I'm working on. And as you can see, everything's tucked out of the way so it's not going to get in my way when I'm stitching. Today I will show you this this little guy. This is cool cardinal. I've hit a point where I'm going to move move him down so I can do the snow that's sitting on top of his head. And if you remember, this is what he looks like when he's done. So you can see how much stitching is above his head. That's a pretty decent chunk of fabric too. So what I'll do is I'll take the grime guard off, I'll take the project out of the Q-snaps and I'll move him to where I want him and I'll show you how to corral the fabric. If you can see when I take it off my fabric is basically just arranged so that it hugs the Q-snap like so. So we're going to take him off. So one snap off and if you're wondering how I do this, I get my hands on the Q-snap, my thumbs right here and I push and that comes off pretty easily for me. If you have trouble, one of the ways to do it is to grab your fabric and just pull it like that and it snaps right off. Alright, so now to give you an idea, look at all that fabric above him and quite a bit below him as well. So since I stitch in the well, what I do is I get positioned right where I want it. What I want is just enough space at the top so I can do that chunk of snow that's sitting on top because then I'm going to go and I'm going to back stitch all of the bird, all of the cardinal because that's the only back stitching in this piece is right here. But I need all the stitching that butts up against him done before I start the back stitch. So right here is good. And then what I do is I fold that over like so, hold it nice, I bring it against my body for some leverage, and I pop that Q-snap clamp on. Turn it around, I do the opposite end, I roll the fabric to get it tight with my hands, and then pop on the Q-snap clamp. Alright, so now I'll do the sides. Real quick, I want to see if I can find something to work with. There we go. I want to tuck these little guys under my Q-snap so that they don't get in my way when I'm stitching. So again, roll the fabric firmly, but not, you know, roll, real strong. Clamp it on, and again, roll it. A little bit. Okay, there's my clamp. And on it goes. Alright, so he's in there. Check to make sure that's how I want it. He's a little crooked, but that's fine. I can deal with that. Because my my grid line helps. Alright, so I'm gonna do the top first. As you can see, it's because it's already been tucked the way I like to do it, 
it kind of has nice fold lines where I do it. I basically, I, I roll it like so till I get to the clamp and then I fold it over like so. If this goes too far in, you need your roll length a little bit shorter. But this works for me. So tuck that there and I hold it against my body to keep it, you know, pretty much set. When you're working with a new project, this is not going to lay as nicely as this one is. Um, I've been known to use those little hair clips just to hold it in place while I work the other fabric into place. It's very helpful to get everything situated underneath your grime guard. So again, you see my rolls are already pretty much there. And this one's a little bit off, so he hangs down pretty far that way. So I'm going to redo my roll radius on this so that this edge right here ends up right up against there so then when I fold it around it doesn't travel too far that way. Alright so now I'm going to get this guy back to where he needs to be since I was picking it up to show you and flipping it around. This kind of moved out of the way. Alright, so now I have these two sides ready to go. What I do then is I take these sides right here. These are pretty short, but if this had a lot of fabric, I would do the same thing with the rolling. And then these corners, I take them, I twist them, and I lay them on whatever side makes sense to do so. So there they go, like so. And then I take the grime guard, I get it on there, that side, and on that side too, so that it hold, kind of holds those corners in. And then I turn it around, and I do the same thing on the other side. Sometimes this does take a little bit of fiddling to get it just right. And this is a smaller Q-snap, so it's easy for me to do with one hand to hold both corners. And then go like this side, get it on there, and then I do some adjustments. I push that flap of fabric in so that it's caught a little bit more by the grime guard. And then you see I have this one corner that's a little wonky. I just roll it and tuck it right up in there. And then the last thing I do, because you can see he's got a little, little floppy in the process, I go, because I've stitching in the well, this is my process. I lift this up a little bit to get my fingers on that clamp and I rotate it out on each side to tighten him up again. And I do this occasionally while I'm working with it. If the Q-snap gets old and I need to, um, the clamps are getting kind of um, loose. There's two things you can do. I have not done it yet, but I've heard a lot of people, if you put the clamps in the dishwasher, the heat will cause it to go back into its original shape. Also, there is hoop tape. The spool of, it, I'll go grab it and I'll show you, but it's just a thin tape that's yellow and has a textured surface to it. I put it on the PVC part of my Q-snap and that gives it a, a good amount of more grip. So I have a couple Q-snaps 
that have gotten loose and I've added the hoop tape. Um, but this one is still pretty good. He hasn't gotten to the point yet where I feel the need to do that. There he is, cool cardinal. He's been adjusted and he is ready to go and all my fabric is tucked nicely out of the way. Alright, so I'm going to go grab the hoop tape and I'll be right back. Alright, so this is the hoop tape. This is what the package looks like. And it is just like tape. You peel it up and it's sticky on this side. And this side is a, let's see if I can get up real close. It's a rubbery textured surface. Can you hear that? Okay. So this is what I put on my Q-snaps when they start getting a little loose. And it usually does the trick pretty well. On the pieces that have these short little connectors, you'd run the tape from here to bef just before you get to the connector. You don't want it to bridge across because then when you take it apart, it's going to get, you know, pulled off. And then on your bigger ones that have these larger connector pieces, you'd run a line from, from right here over to the connector, but not over that line. I would run one along the connector, and I'd put a little piece right here on the elbow as well. Alright, so since I'm here, I might as well show you the best way to put your Q-snap together. So you've got all your pieces with the connectors added and you just lay them out so that they form a square like so. Then you will push these two together like so and then push these two together like so and then you push the two sides together and there it is on the short ones that's pretty important on the longer ones there's a little bit of wiggle room that you can kind of bend it a little bit to get it there but that's the preferred way to to assemble all right so just a little bit more about q snaps i'm gonna use my little six incher to demonstrate when you don't have anything on your Q-snap, usually the easiest way to remove the clamps is just to slide them off, like so. All right, and when I have a project that I'm going to be placing a clamp over already stitched area or if the clamps are getting a little little loose one other thing that you can do to help with that is I have some white flannel cotton fabric so it's nice and soft and white so there's gonna be no color transfer and the flannel doesn't really shed any any little bits and pieces if it starts to start giving off little pieces on the edges I'll just search those but so far I haven't, I haven't had any problem with them so what I do is I have a three inch strip of the white flannel and I cut my pieces I measure the clamp that is going to go on the piece and I give it a half an inch past, so you get a quarter of an inch on either side of the clamp. And then you have your stitched piece. You just lay this over top of it, like so. And then when you put your clamp on, it does the clamp, the edges of the clamp 
will not catch any of the stitches that are already done. I had to do this one time as um, before as well with a piece of seven count cluster fabric that came in a kit. I found that the weave on that really large count fabric was that was catching on the clamp. So back then what I did is um, cut up an old t-shirt and I used that as the strip so that works just as well as this flannel. Alright so another option if you that you can use as well and this is especially helpful if you do have loose clamps is something a little thicker white um, fleece the, I get the anti pill stuff from Joann's and I've already cut a strip to three inches so if I find I ever ever need something a little thicker a little cushier I will use this instead and when I'm not using these what I'll do is I'll put them in a little baggie and on the outside I'll write the size of the um, Q-snap that I made them for so they're ready to go for the next time I need need them for a little six incher alright so that's everything I had to pass along today if you have any questions please let me know and we'll see you next time. Happy stitching!